Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Ladies First. I'm Denise and we know that most of you are studying from home now. So today, I am going to be studying with you guys. And what we have done is collected some of your most difficult homework questions. I'm going to try to tackle this on today's video just to give you some motivation and to see if I can remember all of this from so many years ago. This will be one of my most favourite videos. To make because I love homework yeah. and I can't wait to tackle all of these with you guys are working from home we kind of need to have a structure to it make sure you don't neglect your homework set aside some time every single day for your revision before you go and relax and watch all your dramas or cartoons okay let's get into it okay the first one is from Lup Zena D A 692 okay the question goes a family goes to a team park Two grandparents pay one-third of the full entrance price, two parents pay the full price, and three children pay half price. A full price ticket costs $5.70. How much is the total cost of admission for the family? This one is pretty simple, but I think the difficult part comes in the fact that there are a lot, there are, there are two different factors which are involved. So the first is the number of people, and the second is the type of the ticket price which they are paying for. So usually when I tackle these type of questions, I like to lay out all of these factors very clearly first so I will start with the people so from a family I have two grandparents and then you have information about the tickets and how much they cost so I'm gonna draw a box to kind of illustrate um, how much different people are gonna pay for my ticket prices grandparents only pay one third parents will pay the full price children will pay half price 570 570 divided by 3 190 each box is 1.9. So grandparents only pay 190. So we'll take 2 times 1.9. Parents pay full price, so we'll take 2 times 5.7. And kids pay half price. What is 570 divided by 2? Do we have a calculator? <laughs> this is the answer. 23.75. Should be correct, right? Okay, I'll check again. Just to be very sure. It is correct. Confirm correct. $23.75. The next one is from Emma Sung583. So this question goes like this. At first, box M had 18 pears and 42 lemons, while box N had 36 pears and 50 lemons. So then some lemons were moved from box M to box N, and then some pears were moved from box N to box M. And then in the end, box M contained pears and lemons in a 3 is to 4 ratio, whereas box N contained pears and lemons in the 1 is to 2 ratio. Super complicated. There are so many numbers. But these kinds of questions, what they are testing basically is how you're going to manipulate the numbers to form all of these proportions. Basically, these kinds of questions are known as matrix questions. Matrix meaning proportion. So how do we move these proportions around? And a constant in a matrix question is always the total number of fruits you have in this case. We have two types of fruits. Pears and we also have lemons. And then we have box M and we have box N. And then this is just total. In total, we have 18 pairs plus 36 pairs, which is, let me use a calculator, we have 54 pairs. And then lemons, 42 plus 90, which is 92. So we start from the total and then box M, contains pears and lemons in a 3 is to 4 ratio. And then it doesn't matter what we have in N anymore because N will basically be the total minus whatever we have in M. Okay, let's call this 1 and 2. It's too confusing. Or maybe A and B. I'll change this to box A and box B. So whatever I have in box B is basically total minus whatever I have in box A. 54 minus 3U and 92 minus 4 you. Now, we have a simultaneous equation. So equation number 1 is 54 minus 3u, which according to the question for the second box, the ratio is now 1 is to 2. So if I take the lemons and I divide this by 2, it will be equals to 54 minus 3u. 54 minus 46 is 8 is equals to 1u. So now we have solved the simultaneous equation. We know one unit is 8 fruits. How many lemons were in box M? This is my M. Uh. So my lemons will be 4 times 8. The answer is 32. The next one is from 
Lokari Susila. And her question is, what is a ribosome? And then what about a lysosome? I don't even know if my pronunciation is correct. I learned this really, really long ago. I think it's been eight years. From what I remember, a ribosome is present in all living cells and its function is basically to produce like protein for the cells. Then a lysosome, it's the opposite of a ribosome. Rather than producing, it breaks things down. So things like viruses, excess cells, dead cells, stuff like that. But this is not the scientific definition. This is from what I remember. The next one is from Les UX the Mahi. His or her question is, what is an economic system? and describe the advantages and disadvantages of a market system. These type of questions, right, like definition questions, there is no easy way around it. You just have to memorize the definition. An economic system is basically like a system to allocate goods and services. Yeah, basically production and allocating goods and services within a society. There is definitely more to it, but I just cannot recall the exact definition. Go back to your textbook. The answer is definitely in your textbook. The advantages and disadvantages of a market system. So two parts of this question. First, you need to know what's a market economy. Market economy is like a, basically nobody is really controlling the system. It regulates itself based on forces of supply and demand. The government cannot come in and help to uh, tweak any part of the system in any way, which also means nobody needs to pay taxes. So one of the advantages of this kind of a system is definitely there's going to be more competition. As long as you put in the work, you put in the money and the investment, you can kind of get back your profit. And then one of the disadvantages of this is basically reduce social security. I think this kind of a system also breeds inequality because the wealth, you need wealth in order to get profit. Because you kind of need to invest first before you can get the money back. The next one is from JD Chan. Cute name. The top of a lighthouse is 24 meters above the ground and it is connected to two wires as shown in the figure. You kind of need to draw the figure out for this. This is the top of the lighthouse with the bulb and then it is connected to two wires. The thing is, since the CT goes straight into the ground and then the ground, it kind of runs like straight, we know that this is a this is a right angle. So this is going to be very useful for us later. This is 40 meters, this is 20 meters, and we want to find the length of B to T. This question makes use of the Pythagoras theorem. What the Pythagoras theorem is, is that when you take every right angle triangle that you have, like this, this is A, B, and C. If you take A square plus B square, you will get C square. This is the equation. So using this formula, we already have A and then we also have B. We also have C. This whiteboard is too small. <laughs> Let me draw a smaller diagram. So this is the first thing that we want to find now. What is this? And that will be 40 squared minus 24 squared. What is 40 squared minus 24 squared? <laughs> Let me calculate, okay. 1, 0, 2, 4. So if I want to know the length of my triangle, it will be the square root of 1, 0, 2, 4, which is... 32. <laughs> B, C is 32 meters minus 20 meters which is equals to 12. And then just apply the Pythagoras theorem again. So you have 12 squared plus 24 squared, which will be equals to BT. 144 plus 576. 720 and BT is the square root of 720. I feel so insecure. <laughs> Like maybe they designed this question to throw you off. Let us not question ourselves. I'm gonna lock this in. The next question is from It's Cherise here. I like questions which has food. Makes me hungry. There are three types of cakes in Sam's Bakery. The number of mango cakes is 4 ninth of the total number of cakes. 7 out of 10 of the remaining cakes are cheesecakes. So the rest of the cakes are blueberry cakes. And then Sam sold 56 pieces of the mango cakes and the ratio of the mango cakes to the blueberry cakes became 2 is to 1. So how many pieces of cakes were left in Sam's bakery? What is tricky about it is that we are working both with whole numbers and also fractions. To put things very clear, we want to just write out like what are the fractions and the numbers that we are working with first. I have 9 units of cakes. 
And then of my nine units, four are mango, which means the total here is five units. But I don't know how many are cheese and how many are blueberry. Seven out of ten of the remaining were cheesecakes. So the remaining is my five units, but it's only five. I need to make this ten, so I'm going to multiply two to everything. And this means I have eight units, ten units, seven of which are cheese, three are blueberry, and then I'll have 18 in total. The thing about working with fractions is you can always um, multiply a constant to everything and it doesn't change the proportion. So you can just play around with the number that you're using. So these are the numbers that we have left. I'm just going to erase this so it's not confusing. And then for my mango, I will minus 56 pieces. But nothing happens to the blueberry. And what this means is, it you minus 56 pieces is the same as blueberry times 2. Then again, we have another simultaneous equation. So 1u is equals to 28. So how many cakes were left in Sam's Bakery? We'll just take 28 times 7 times 10, 9 times 18 and then minus 56. This is the answer. 448, I'll lock this in. The next question is from Chen Yan Ning. So this question goes like this. The length of a rectangle is twice that of its breadth. If the length of the re rectangle is decreased by 10%, whereas the breadth increases by 10%, determine if any, the, the percentage change in the parameter. Okay, first off, definitely there is going to be a change because we are working, even though the percentages are the same, the base number that you are working with is different. Let me explain what I mean. So 10% of 10 is 1, but 10% of 100 is 10. So even though 10% difference in both, your absolute change is still different because your base number that you're working with is different. So the same principle applies here as well. I'm going to refer to the breadth as x and then the length is unknown to x since it's double. So current total parameter, parameter is pretty easy la. It's just your, basically the length of the entire rectangle which would be 6x. And then now we want to know the change. Length of the rectangle decreased by 10 which is 1 out of 10 of 2x and then negative and then let me put this here first triangle is a symbol for change i'm just gonna put this here and the other change is breath minus plus 10 which is the same as 2 minus 2 this is overall change your length has, this, has decreased by 10 percent which means minus 1 out of 10 of 2x and then your breadth has increased, which means plus 1 out of 10 of x. Your overall change in within this side of the rectangle only is plus 1 out of 10 x. So then I'll double this. It will become total change that will parameter is 2 over 10 x. We can see that there is definitely going to be a change in the parameter. You can try these with many different numbers. There will always going to be a change just because the base number that we are working with is different. Last question of the day. This is from Priya1 underscore Gupta. So the question goes like this. There are 12 people on an island. 11 of them weigh exactly the same, but one is heavier. You can use a seesaw, but you can only use it three times and we need to figure out which is the individual that is heavier. Normally, this would be a very easy question, but because you can only use the seesaw three times, we need to think of a way where we can divide all of these people up so that we are able to weigh every single person and not leave someone out. Logically, the first thing that we should do is divide all 12 people into three groups, which means we will have three groups of four people each. Let me draw this out. I think it'll be clearer. So right now, I have a seesaw. I have group one, group two, and group three. And in total, I have 12 people. What I'm going to do is take group one and group two and put them on the seesaw first. Let's say your, your heavier person is in this group, your seesaw is going to tilt one way. So let's say the seesaw tilt. So then I know, right, the heavier person is one of these in the original four. And I have two more tries with the seesaw. So what I'm going to do is split these people up. Right now, actually maybe let me draw this in a clearer way for you guys. Group one, group two. Let's say the seesaw tilts. Then, the next round, I'm going to pick these same four people and I'm going to split them up into twos. Since I know the heavier person is in this group, the seesaw is definitely going to tilt. Let's say the seesaw tilts in this direction, I'll take these two people, 
put them on the seesaw again, and I'll find out who is the heavier person within three tries. Now this works only in the scenario where the seesaw tilts with my with the first two groups of people. So right now, going with the assumption that the seesaw does not tilt, which means the heavier person is not in the first two groups, then I know that the heavier person is definitely in the last group. So then from here, I'll put these four on the seesaw, split them up. Heavier person will cause the seesaw to drop. Take the two from that corner, put them on the seesaw, and you'll be able to find the heavier person. Everybody understands me, right? Okay, and that is it for today. Thank you for sending us all of your questions. I had so much fun. Remember to be consistent, stay motivated, take frequent breaks if you need to, and please send us more of these questions. We really enjoy doing this and it is so much fun. And maybe in the next episode, we will get some of the other girls to join me. Thank you so much for watching. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch all of our other videos. Bye-bye!